The Great Search, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. This is when Lady Age uses her power of engineering to help you, yes, you, find what you are looking for on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is this week's Great Search? You'll never believe it, but this one is a part that's been discontinued. Oh, no. Unavailable. And so we have First to find it. First time in history. Yeah. Oh, oh. And for this week so far. Oh, for this hour. Since last Sunday. Yeah. Um, so this week we are kind of uh, humming along trying to find a good replacement for a part that's about to be completely unavailable, um, the LC709203, our uh, go-to battery monitor chip. So let's um, visit uh, Adafruit and we'll show oh, this off. Any uh, chance that battery monitor will make it on a feather revision? We don't know. Maybe. Don't know. Maybe not. Let's explore together. Let's explore together. Um, okay, so this is what we've got now, the LC709. So this um, this monitor is, 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 it's out of stock now, but it's actually not because it's not out of stock. We just sold a bunch. Um, this uh, battery monitor uh, is quite nice because it doesn't use a sense resistor. It's like about $1.50 uh, for the chips, which means I can make a whole breakout with everything and test it for about $7.00. Um, the original version had a TDFN part, you can kind of barely see it here, um, which was really nice because it was easy to solder. You know, eventually that became um, unavailable and now we have to use the BGA part, but the BGA part's not too bad. It's a nine pin BGA, but the center pad um, can, can, you know, connects to one of the middle pads, so like it's fine, you know, it's basically um, you're not dealing with, okay, how do I get you know, my pads out from underneath a BGA. Um, the problem is, is that this part, I mean, it's it's discontinued, it's still available, um, but it's going to eventually be not available. That said, it was still, because it's just so inexpensive and great, um, it's still been worth it to use. So for example, this is what I originally used. It's uh, no longer manufactured, no longer available. And so I was like, well, I'm just gonna swap over to the BGA version. Also unavailable, but there is, you know, um, 18,000 in stock, 19,000 in stock. And and there's plenty, and we don't, we've been able to order enough to last us many years. So we're actually, you know, good for a while. But long term, or if something happens to the inventory we have or whatever, we will have to uh, design out. Or if I'm designing new boards, I'm probably going to design out uh, to get something else because... Uh, stuff that's gone end of line is is end of line year than it used to be. So I wanted to uh, show how I sourced a alternative. Um, so the price is you know about a dollar sixty. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with um, for you know competition for this part. I want something that ideally isn't BGA, or if it is, not having to use the middle pads because I really want to stick to some low cost two layer boards. I don't want to have to go to four lo four layer or like buried vias or plug viewers or whatever. Lithium ion, lithium polymer battery, um, single cell is fine, and I want it to be I squared C. So looking at the options here, I want the battery monitor with one cell of uh, lithium ion, although maybe I won't pick that. I want it to be surface mount, and let's see what they've got. So let's only go for active parts, because I don't want to deal with non-active. Um, next up, we've got a couple options, you know, basically lithium ion, lithium cobalt oxide, you know, lyco, lithium ion polymer, maybe multi-chemistry, I think, whatever, it's fine. I think, you know, lithium ion is, covers everything, but still. Next for the interface, so I actually had to look up what is HDQ um, and SDQ, so it turns out those are basically one wire, so I don't want those, so I want I squared C and HDQ I squared C. Um, I don't want one wire. The, I looked at the ones that are dash and those are actually like battery protection monitors. Like they don't have any interface at all. They just like turn on and off the connectivity to protect the cell. I want something that's a, it's really a monitor. Like not like a monitor to like care for it, but a monitor so I can like query it. Okay, so um, it pairs it down a lot. So you can see like this actually, the LC709204 is clearly the next generation, but again, I don't, like, I don't like the BGAs, and I don't like the BGAs with the pads in the middle that I gotta do stuff with, because I don't wanna have to route around 
Um, I don't want to have to get like a four four rule board. I don't want to do a four layer board. Lazy. Let me let me be lazy. Um, okay, so given that uh, there's actually quite a few options. So first up, I'm going to do you know the pricing is really important to me. Like there's just no way I'm going to make a board with a three dollar chip on it. It basically adds like ten bucks worth of cost. It has to be like around. It has to be less than two dollars. So let's see what is available. I also want stuff that's only normally stocking. I don't want, if it's not something, it's okay if it's not in stock right now, but if it's something they usually, they don't stock at all, I don't want to, you know, I don't want a special order, something I'm never going to get. So actually there's a couple of options, including of course that LC709. So this is by price. So you can see, you know, this one's actually quite interesting. So this is the um, F. FFG 3105. So this was interesting. It's actually, you know, I mentioned I don't want a battery protection cell. I want something to tell me, like, the state of charge. This is actually kind of both. Um, it has a unique identifier. It has I squared C on it, but it's also meant to uh, possibly control and signal the protection I see. Um, it doesn't have a sense resistor. Um, but one thing that is a little annoying about, not that I have a, well, I don't have a big problem with this chip, but a little bit of a thing is it only really is an ADC. Like it doesn't really, it doesn't have, um, an alert output. I'm sorry. It has a chip enable. So it only, it's like, there's one output, but that just is like something terrible went wrong. Like you can't really like customize it very much. And if you go down to, um, you know, the register maps. Hold on. Beep, 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 beep. Um, you can do pack, you can read the pack temperature and the voltage temperature. Uh, it says cell current, but that actually doesn't work. And like, there's just user ID, like a battery ID. So it's it's not really, it's basically an I squared C ADC that's extremely low power. It doesn't have any like monitoring or alerts or um, state of charge calculator. So. It's not a bad chip. I mean, it's 50 cents, but it's actually kind of like not what um, I'm looking for. So that was cool. I kind of skipped over these. I mean, I looked at the data sheet for these. A lot of these were good, but again, it's like I really, I didn't want a 0.4 millimeter BGA if I could avoid it. Um, also, a lot of these required a sense resistor. And again, I kind of wanted to avoid that. A sense resistor is, of course gonna get you the best like coulomb counting. You're gonna be able to track the current going in and out, but um, it makes it a little tougher for people to, like if you've got a feather and you wanna like monitor it online or if you have an existing system and you don't wanna get in between the battery, like if you don't, if you wanna tap onto the battery but not get it in between, um, this is more complicated. That said, you know, the, the BQ <laughs> series has some good options and one thing to check is um, sometimes, not in this case, but sometimes if you're lucky, the middle pin, which in this case is B2, can connect to another pin. So you, again, it doesn't have to go out. But unfortunately, in this case, um, it, is a, it, it, it is a ground pin. And they're expecting, I think, to have like a plug to be on, you know, inside to, to get to the ground, pad, uh, ground plane underneath, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to skip those. And then there's a whole family of them. Um, the next ones that seemed okay were, uh, like this one, it's not stock right now, this TI series, but, um, it was in a package that wasn't, it's a VSON, so at least you can solder to it, you know, without wanting to die. Um, doesn't look too bad, but again, it, you know, doesn't require a sense resistor, so, you know, not, not terrible but um, something to keep in mind. But I would, you know, I'd look at that because it is inexpensive. And then um, there is uh, another one from Maxim. This is a fuel gauge. This one does also need our sense and it has, it requires an R sense against the ground. It's a low side sensing, which um, really drives me nuts because I really don't like having grounds that are different. Like I don't mind if the, power voltage, you know, can dip a little bit, but I really dislike it when my grounds are moving. So unfortunately this one is kind of a no-go. Um, so like as I scroll down, there's more of that BQ series. And that's when I basically bumped into um, the Max 
17048 because this kind of is very similar to the LC709203. No sense resistor, runs directly off the battery, has an alert, has I squared C. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, and I got the driver working, you know, in a couple hours in CircuitPython. And another nice thing about it, which I thought was nice, uh, is that the, you know, it runs off of a battery which is expected to be 2.5 to 4.5 volts, but the data pins can be up to five. So, you know, if you're using this with something like an Arduino Uno or some other five volt microcontroller, you can send I squared C data five volts, even if the battery is at like 3.3, like it's, it's protected. So, um, I ended up going with this chip, but I did want to show one one more option because I saw this weird chip. So I was like, well, like let's look at this. I think it was the LTC. Um, this LTC wasn't too bad. Also required a sense resistor, but there was another one. If I can remember, it was... Hold on. I have it in my, uh, uh, actually I don't. So let me actually look up analog devices maxim and see if I can find it. Was it this one? No, sorry, not analog. It was um, linear. Sorry. Not this one. Was it this one? Oh, bummer, I can't find it. There was one interesting um, chip, maybe we'll highlight this, that uh, Linear Tech came out with. And um, what's neat about it is it actually, the was, sense resistor wasn't inside the package itself. Um, and it could, like, it did the coolant counting, but didn't need an external resistor. Like, it did high side sensing all on its own. I can't find it now, but um, if I do later, we'll post about it. But... The problem is that, that even though I liked that the resistor, that it was a high side sense resistor on the inside, um, it had a hundred milliamp current um, output max. So, in the end, um, what I ended up going with was the um, Max seventeen O forty six. Benefit also was there's ten thousand in stock, so you know I'm I'm ordering basically a reel of these, and I've got the breakout ready to go now. <coughs> um, but these have been actually in stock for quite a bit. Like the Maxim's done a really good job of keeping them. Um, available for DigiKey. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident that this is not going to be discontinued um, in the next two weeks. If I'm picking a replacement, I want to try to pick something that's good for like three years at least. Summarize nicely in the chat. Sounds like this week's great search lesson is at a times finding a suitable replacement. Take some diving into the details of the data sheets and recommendation, recommend configuration. That's right. Yeah. Especially with battery monitors, they're all a little different. Like you yeah. saw, some are high side, some are low side, some need sensor resistors, some don't, some are. Some they have I squared C, but check the register map. Does it really give you what you need? Um, but yeah, this one, this one's a good one. Um, I'll probably end up also looking at a high side, you know, a current sensing one um, as a, as a as a backup alternative because these the 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 model gauge ones like these where they try to model the state of charge based on voltage and um, voltage change. Are really funky, but they're they're a little unusual. They're weird. All right. Well, Skr has a good pun. Uh, it's a real experience, R E E L. And then I immediately I said, oh, we should do a new show, the real world, yeah. where um, we put five engineers in a house and we don't give them parts. Let's see what happens. I, <laughs> they have to they have to fight over the last uh, you know tube of at mega three. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to do engineering. <sighs> Sounds like random hall. Okay. Naked and afraid of not getting parts. <laughs> okay, that's this week's Great Search. Thanks.